I was wanting to go do burnouts. A few of my mates, we used to have old school cars when we were younger, went out to a track day uh, Oran Park. I thought we were just going to do burnouts and there was uh, drifting. I was intrigued and um, tried to give it a go in my car. It didn't work, so went home, sold my old Sigma and bought a drift car and just went from there. A lot of people think that drifting is, oh, just smoke the tires, the best person to smoke the tires. It's not like that at all. You want to be the fastest car on the track, which means you need to have the most grip. Everyone has their own way they want to build their car. Uh, for me personally, uh, ever since I started drifting, you know, it's been in Nissan SR20s. Pretty much gone for the biggest of everything that I can do. So this is obviously where all the business happens, this is the heart of the car. So here we got the GDX 1376 Turbo, which uh, pushes through about 24 pound of boost at the moment. Then we have over here, just the LS1 coils, been in the car for about four years, haven't missed the beat. Obviously then fuel, we run E85 fuel, uh, three fuel pumps, comes through pushing the fuel onto the motor, the Siemens uh, 2,500cc injectors. That's so why I keep life on the turbo a bit more, got the teal blow off valve. Um, then obviously we have one of the main components, you gotta keep the oil cool, uh, which this is just an oil relocation kit, which runs down to the oil cooler, which is situated for good airflow underneath the car. And obviously next we have the heart of the car, which is the motor, Nissan SR20, fully built from ground up, pistons, rods, uh, headwork, cams, all the bits really. The car makes 400 kilowatt. I want the high power, the high revs, like my car, we run big boost in it. Um, you know, I'm known for pretty much holding the car flat. Never lift. That's my only rule. This one's flat, and this one, boom. <laughs> you don't lift this one. As you get better, you realise that it's not enough to compete. You actually got to hit the clipping points. You got to do it with max angle and also the way you switch back. Um, in drives briefing for each comp is different. They'll tell us exactly where they want us to put the car. It's not necessarily just sliding through the corner, but they'll tell you you have to be sort of within a foot of this point where they're called rear clips or front clips. So it might be a witch's hat or it might be a concrete wall. So you'll see on some of our events, we're actually coming in, sliding the car sideways, and you're really a perfect lap. You'll actually touch the concrete wall with your rear bumper, slide it down, put a nice little graze mark on your rear bar. I just want to go out there and put the best lap I can put down. Do you know when you've got the car where you want it and you're going to be able to drive on his door and hold it around there. You know, if you're pushing that hard, sometimes you may push too hard. You know, <laughs> what do you do? That's, that's racing. Come home with no damage, you're not driving hard enough. Last year, I pretty much worked to drift. So my whole way is going. But you don't know, think about the money. At the end of the day, it eventually might cost you everything that you earn. But if you go out there and you do those laps and you take your car home and you think about, yeah, you know what, it was worth it at the end of the day. So you could count how much money you keep a record, but at the end of the day, you don't want to know. You just want to go out there and drive. It's just drift. If you drift, you work and you drift. That's it.